want you to register yourself in his presence one more time by your worship. I want you to do a spiritual clocking in into this service. I want you to clock in into this service. Let God know that you are here. Worship him in your own way. Sing to him. Dance to him. Call him by his name. Let him know that you are here this morning. Let the Lord know that you are ready for an encounter here this morning. Go ahead and worship him. Magnify him. Give him praise. Give him honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship him. Let us say a good amen. One more time, I want you to speak to three persons. Greet them again. And just tell them something good prophetically as you are led of the Spirit. Go ahead and do that very, very quickly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mashandala Boroba Zeketalia. If you receive the prophecy of your neighbor, shout one big hallelujah. Brother, we are going to start this prayer very, very start this meeting quickly with some seven prophetic prayers. Is it too much? If you it has been a journey since Friday. If you have been with us in the journey, it will not be a surprise to you. There are destiny changing prayers. And uh, paraventure, the prayer does not make any meaning to you. You pray all the same. By the time you'll be here seeing the testimony, you would have forgotten you prayed the prayers. Are you with me? Thank you, Father. But let's see them briefly. For two minutes, or one or two minutes. I want to appreciate God for the privilege to be here one more time. And uh, I thank God specially for the eminent men of God and women of God in the house this morning. Our pastor and pastor, Mrs. Robinson, I said the very grace, Sir Amma. Thank you, sir. Our pastor and pastor, Mrs. Olufemi, I said the very grace, sir. Ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. How many of you believe that Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Oyedino, you know, they are good people? You believe it? Help me celebrate them, please. Somebody was asking me that, did you know the pastor before? I said, I don't truly really know him, but I know him through one of my daughters. So, and the man now, Ask you to come and minister on his altar three days. He wrote it, but he was not even afraid. He took a step of faith, a risk. Any man that yields his altar to you is a man of God. I want to appreciate you, sir. Amma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. I'm not taking the privilege for granted. Your height have just begun. God will take you higher still in the name of Jesus. For my spiritual daughters, Mr. Lola and husband, God bless you tremendously. Sincerely speaking, for the past few days I've been here, I've been enjoying myself. Seriously, I've enjoyed myself. You know, and I said something yesterday in this gathering. It was not a flattering. I've not seen a weekly attendance in this United States like I saw yesterday here. Because the, the meeting... Uh, was something else, but the attendance was so, so encouraging. I pray that this church will go from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. All right, let's begin this journey as we, this journey to the conclusion of these three days with these prayers. Shall we rise up? Thank you, Father. 
If you are ready to pray, shout another big hallelujah. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Mm. Say after me loud and clear. Say mercy and grace that prevents a man from entering error in life. Anybody can enter error. A man has been in ministry for 25 years and the man is in his 70s and he, 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 he slept with a young lady of 21 years and the, the man said, I didn't know what came over me. People were saying, you didn't know what? You didn't know what? But I told them, I said, Herod did not have respect for any man. Herod does not even respect anointing. When we trace the antecedents, we discover that his father too was used to be a pastor. That was the way the father came down to. Meaning that what overcame his father, what come, what what his father could not overcome, overcome him as well. I pray for you. In the name that's above every other name, you will not be a victim of evil family trend. Say a bigger amen. Say mercy and grace. Say it louder. That prevent a man from entering error. Locate me speedily today. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Mercy and grace. That prevent a man from entering error in life and destiny. Locate me speedily. Locate me speedily in the name of Jesus. Locate me speedily. In the name of Jesus, look at this speedily. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Good. Very quickly, prayer number two. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Say after me, say supernatural favor. Say it louder. That overrule family complications. Come upon me this morning. Hello? There are family complications. In some family, it's limitation. In some family, it's premature death. In some family, it's a particular sickness that runs in the family. In some family, it can be poverty. In some family, it can be marital failure. There are, as our faces are differs, we are from different families, there are family complications. The favor of God can single out a man. The Lord spoke to Abraham. He said, get out, get thee out of your kindred. And because of that, what the, the father of Abraham, Terah, he was going to Canaan. He ended in Terah. And he went in Aaron, rather. But Abraham took his journey from where his father had stopped. And he proceeded to Canaan. And the Bible said, he landed in Canaan. It was favor. His favor that make that single out a man from what kill others. I used to tell people that there are some genetic sickness. Medical people know what I'm talking about. If you notice a particular sickness that is like happening to A, B, C, D in your family, don't wait till it becomes your turn before you fight it. As a student of God, our case should be different. So lift up your two hands, everybody. Say supernatural favor. Say it louder. The overrule family complications. Come upon me this morning. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Supernatural favor. The overrule family complications. The overrule family struggles. Family limitations. Family poverty. Family marital failure. Family premature death, family sickness, come upon me this morning. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I like the way you are praying, but you can pray better. Lift up your two hands. The wicked covenant from my father's house. Wicked covenant. From my mother's house, we get covenant from my in-laws' house. 
you will not stop me. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. You will not stop me. In the name of Jesus, we get covenant from my father's house, from my mother's house, from my in-law's house. You will not stop me. In the name of Jesus, you will not stop me. You will not stop me. You will not stop me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Prayer number four, very, very quickly. Lift up your right hand again. Say my destiny. Say it louder. Hear the voice of the Lord. You will not be at the mercy of parental error. Lift your voice and turn it to prayer. My destiny, hear the voice of the Lord. You will not be at the mercy of the error and mistakes of my parents. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Lord asked me to speak to the life of somebody here this morning. The Lord asked me to tell you that your parents, they were not alive to see the glory that you are manifesting now. That you will be alive to see the glory of your children. The, the owner of that world know himself. You, you, know, so you have been, you, 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 only time you remember how, how far God has helped you and you look back, you always wish that, ah, how I wish my parents were alive to eat the fruit of their labor. I pray for every parent here in the name that's above every other name. When the glory of your children will manifest, you will not be in the grave. When the glory of your children will manifest, you will not be on the sick bed. You will be alive to witness the glory. When they will ask, where is the mother of the bride? Where is the father of the groom? They will not do one minute silence for you. In the name of Jesus, your better days will meet you alive. The days when you will rest back and eat the fruit of your labor, you will be alive. In the name of Jesus, two more prayers. Lift up your right hand. Thank you, Father. Let's say there is somebody in this meeting. Several years ago, your elder brother walked away and they did not find him till today. Let's say I should pray for you so that there will not be a repeat of that occurrence in your family. Anywhere you are, if you are not ashamed to connect with that word that is for you, come before this altar. Lift up your right hand, everybody. Thank you, Father. The strange altar, strange sacrifices. Say it again strange altars, strange sacrifices that is sponsoring captivity. Against my life, your time is up. Aspire now by fire. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Let that person come now if you want to come. Strange altar, strange sacrifices, sponsoring captivity against my life. Your time is up, expire by fire.
arrogant. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Stretch out your hands to this altar. The height that nobody has ever attained in your family. By this conference, favor from above will catapult to there. I say favor from above will catapult to there. I decree and I declare for everyone under the sound of my voice, every arrow of hatred and rejection fired against your life. If your amen can go louder, the arrow return to the sender. Every arrow of if not me, nobody else, that somebody somewhere are fired against you and your mother's children. If your amen can go louder, the arrow return now in double fold. The arrow return now in double fold. I professor, in the midst of your brethren, in the midst of your mother's children, the Lord will single you out for favor and dominion. Thank you, eternal God. As we look into the word of God, Holy Spirit, open our eyes of understanding. Speak to us. Sharpen our spiritual understanding. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Say a bigger amen. amen. Let's have our seats briefly. Let's clap for Jesus. Thank you. We can do better than what you are doing. Once again, I want to appreciate God for what God has been doing in our midst since Friday. We have been looking at a thematic focus titled Setting the Captive Free. Friday, we lay a foundation. Yesterday, we dealt with a topic titled Confronting Satanic Stronghold. But this morning, as we wrap up, I'm going to wrap up with a topic that I titled Open Heavens and Foundational Captivity. Open Heavens and Foundational Captivity. The Bible text that was read to us was an episode of a particular family. Now, there are so much errors in that family and God was angry with them. As the scripture in Psalm 34, um, Exodus 34, verse 7, I say, God is a God of mercy that he can even visit iniquity from generation, first generation to the fourth generation. This particular family that we read about, the evil, great evil, was so much. Why? Because of error of their fathers. And the Bible says, through their not being sensitive, Instead for them to correct the error, they continue with the error of their fathers. That is the problem with traditions and customs. I pray for you. You will not pay for what you did not buy. Amen. Lamentation 5 7 said, Our father have seen, and they are no more. And we bore the consequences of their sins. Isaiah 14, verse 21. Isaiah 14, verse 21. He said, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. The question is, what is the offense of the children? Let me pray for you one more time. You will not pay for what you did not buy. You will not suffer for what you know nothing about. In the name of Jesus. Foundational captivity is about suffering for what you know nothing about. 
The Bible said the fathers have ate so great and the teeth of the children are set at edge. A lot of us from African race, we are suffering from what we know nothing about. That is why as an African man, you should not allow the sophistication of now to format you, to format your mentality, to format your spiritual reasoning. So when we talk about open heavens, open heavens literally is talking about the awesomeness, the awesome in, involvement of God. Open heaven is the presence of God in the matter. Until the heavens open for Jesus, his ministry never starts. Open heaven will always put an end to struggles of a man. Open heaven will always ensure that the battle you should be fighting by yourself, God will take over and be fighting for you. Psalm 44 verse 3. Psalm 44 verse 3 says, For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou art a favor unto them. The favor that your life needs we come this morning. One of the strongest restrictions and limitations to life and destiny can be traced to foundational battles or foundational captivity. Because the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So when we talk about foundation, you can't see foundation, but it's there. So, foundational captivity or battles talks about hidden, invisible, destructive content in the journey of destiny that have the capacity to mess a man up. Hidden, invisible, equally destructive content in the journey of destiny of a man that have the capacity to rubbish a man. It has the capacity to make a man to die as a shadow of his original. It has the capacity to make a man to die unfulfilled. It can make a man to die uncelebrated. It can make a man to die unknown. It can make a man to die as an echo when it should be a voice. I pray for everyone here this morning. You will not die uncelebrated. Say a bigger amen. You will not die as a shadow. You will not die unknown. You will not die unfulfilled. Where God is taking you to, you will get there. You will not just be here to mark time. You shall fulfill destiny. Because once foundational captivity is on active service, destiny fulfillment will become a mirage. We talk about captivity of various dimensions. The mother of every form of captivity is foundational captivity. Foundational captivity, they are sponsored by several things. Evil inheritance, bloodline battles, causes, covenants, family rituals, family tradition, family customs, I do worshiping, incorrect marriage, incest, and several. Seed of wickedness, several. Several things. You can't, you got all of these things, there is no time to deal with them. Let me tell you this short story about myself. I have a series of encounters about foundational battles. There was a time that I discovered that uh, things were not okay with me. Any of you, after this meeting, you need to call, call those that you need to call and ask questions. I called my grandmother, blessed memory. I said, tell me the story about your husband. That is my grandfather that died 
Because it was the father, the man that died, and they gave birth to me. That was why I was named Baba Tunde. It was me that removed the Baba from the, the, the matter. That I, only, I just come, only me waka come. And the woman was excited to tell me about the man. Ah, he started chanting praises of the husband. Ah, my husband, this, that. And the Bajuma, all those Yoruba incantations. He said, the man happened to be the chief priest in their community in those days. That there is a ritual they do every year. They do the ritual with a pregnant woman, pregnant woman alive, buried. And in his lifetime, the man would have buried over 70 pregnant women alive. And the man was telling with excitement. I just told my mama, I said to hear me, say, I understand. Now I understand why there are many innocent blood that are crying for vengeance against my life. That is my own, I've told you. Do you know what kind of error it is speaking against you? Do you know why things are not working the way it's supposed to work? In the course of this meeting, God will locate your foundation in the name of Jesus. Every time this captivity is on active service, the manifestation can make a man to suffer in the midst of plenty. A man can be in America and struggle as if he's not in America. Shall I shock you? Everybody that is in Nigeria, they believe that once you are in America, your life is settled. <laughs> is, that the, is that the right conclusion? Manifestation of foundational captivity can make a man to struggle with nothing to show. It can make a man to suffer in the midst of plenty. It can make a man to suffer untold hardship. Foundational captivity is a sponsor of prayers without results. You'll be praying that you not get the result. It's simply because you have not located the exact problem. Foundational captivity can manifest in form of a working corpse. I spoke about working corpse three days ago. Working corpse means a man is alive and is not better than a dead man. When a man is alive and everything that should, should make him to be somebody I've been denied expression. It's not better than a dead man. It's a walking corpse. A man that is walking, you could not pay your bills well. A man that is walking, you could not take your, care of your family well. A man that is able-bodied, nothing is wrong with you. No wife, no children. A lady, beautiful, no husband, no children. All these things, you are alive as if you are not alive. Many at times, they are not ordinary. Foundational captivity equally sponsored are called uniform affliction. Uniform affliction is when everybody is suffering the same thing. In Matthew 23, verse 23 to 30, I think, a particular family, the Bible spoke about seven brethren that marry a particular woman. The first one married the woman, died without issue. He died prematurely, he died without issue, he died foolishly. And the second one took over. Married the woman too. Like that, like that. The third one, the fourth one. Until seven brethren of the same mother married a particular woman. And they all died miserably. They all died barren. They all died foolishly. They all died shamefully. Why did I say foolishly? You that witnessed the burial of your, of your senior brother. You see go ahead and married the, 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 the woman. How much beauty can, how, how, how beautiful would the woman have been? But it can even happen today. It might not be marriage. Do you know that uh, as a child of God, when you are too traditional, when you too have respect for custom and tradition of where you are from, Customs and tradition that have no biblical foundation will always end you in captivity. As a child of God, make your stand known. 
You want to be free from uniform affliction? What others suffer? You don't want to suffer it? Stand on the word of God alone and make, let them know that you are now a child of God. You are different. Know that there is no family customs, family tradition, family ritual. But anyone that has no biblical foundation is a no-no to you as a child of God. Are you with me? So, coming out of captivity is not only by prayer and deliverance. One of number, number one deliverance from captivity of any sort is mental deliverance. Once you are delivered from within you, you know, the, 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 the generation of Israelites that died in Egypt, it is not Pharaoh that stopped them all. It was the Pharaoh inside that stopped them. Punishment captivity can sponsor family sickness. Everybody will suffer it. Hypertension, cancer, this, that, that. Punishment captivity can sponsor death before glory. Can make a man to die untimely. I was in the church to minister several years ago, and the Lord said there is somebody in that family and in that church that in their family nobody ever crossed the age of fifty. And as you speak, the man is forty-nine, the eldest in the family. The man came out, and we pray, and the Lord break that joke. As you speak now, the man is my friend. Is around 60 years old now. There are families that they don't cross certain age. There are families you don't see old men. Every, every premature and untimely death is not of God. You can, you can trace it to a wrong foundation. Because have, the Bible said with long life will I satisfy you. And it says once you are in Christ, you are a new creature. You should not die like your father. So, freedom Basically, from this captivity is at the instance of divine intervention. And this divine intervention is what brings in open heaven. So, open heaven is the manifestation of the supremacy of the power of God over whatever power that are being charged of your life. Open heaven is when divinity overrules humanity in order to establish the original counsel of God in your life. The Bible says it's taught towards you they are good ones and not of evil to give you an expected end or a hope and a future. There is an original counsel of God concerning your life. Open heaven is the antidote to life's mysterious battles. Battles that you don't know the beginning. Unexplainable battle of life. Wasting battle. Battle that have wasted generation. A lady wanted to get married in Nigeria. And the lady, the family of the husband to be, they, they hired a boss, a sister boss, and they were traveling from a place in Lagos, um, a place called Lagos, to a place called Agbo in Delta State. And on the way, okay, they have even finished, they are returning. They had an accident. And the old 18 people in the vehicle died, including the father, the mother, the brother, the sister, the uncle. For a very long time, that lady, nobody go near us. In many ways, I said that he's saying you want to go and marry that You want to go and die? You didn't hear about that story. That is what wasting battle can do. They are not ordinary. That you are in America, don't allow sophistication of the land to becloud you. You want to marry, pray. Find out where you are get you are, where you are going. Open heaven is an enforcer of sweatless, overwhelming victory. In this battle we are talking about, life's battle is unavoidable. Open heaven is an enforcer of sweatless, overwhelming victory. Victory without a fight. Now, what happens when heaven opens for you? Number one, very quickly. When heaven opens for you, a long captivity will be terminated. In John chapter 5, verse 1 to 10, 
The man had been there for 38 years, 38 years of no family members, 38 years of no friend, 38 years of no help, 38 years of loneliness, 38 years of frustration, 38 years of stagnation, limitation, no wife, no husband, no children, no relative, and it was as if he's going to die in that captivity. But heaven opened and story changed. I don't know who God is talking to this morning. I don't know how long you have been where you are. Eight long captivity will expire this morning. Oh, let your amen roll like thunder. Number two, when heaven opens, evil family pattern lose identity over your life and destiny. What stop others will not stop you. When heaven opens for you, what, what overcome others will not overcome you. What kill others will, will not be able to kill you. You will be able to escape uniform affliction because your case will be different. When heaven opens for you, because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, it says, If any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things become new. Number three, when heaven opens for a man, evil family law, evil family tradition and customs will be impotent and ineffective. When heaven opens for you, evil family law, family tradition, family custom, it will be ineffective. Remember Solomon. Solomon was in any way qualified for the throne, but heaven opened for Solomon and he bypassed protocol for him. The throne that was meant for Adonijah, his elder brother, was given to Solomon. And it was against law, against custom, against tradition. A man under open heaven is a man that no family custom or law can stop. Because open heaven will make you to break records. Open heaven will make you to cross boundaries. Open heaven will make you to set new record. Just like it happened to Abraham, like I shared before. Genesis 11, 31 and 32. Abraham, father, Terah, he died at Aaron, though he was going to Canaan. And in Genesis 12, 1 to 5, the Lord instructed Abraham to disconnect. Get thee out of the country from thy kindred, mean disconnect. Until a man severe links, ungodly links with your foundation. You might not be able to rise above your root. Several times you'll be saying, it's my brother, it's my sister, it's my father. It's good. That's our tradition. It's good. But you need to get the out of your kindred. Hear me? Instruction. Bring reformation. But when you don't obey instruction, you are looking for destruction. God can make you to set no record in your family when you understand all these things that I'm sharing with you this morning. Number five, when heaven opens for a man, deliverance from invisible, strange and invisible and strange altar, you sure. Deliverance. Many a times we have invisible and strange altars. Open never will bring divine rescue. In Matthew 21, 1 to 7, it was the story of the cult that was tied down. That represents a destiny in captivity that was denied fulfillment, denied expression. But when heaven opened, the tied down destiny was released by divine rescue. Many of you, your glory is somewhere laboring without your permission. But when heaven opened, there will be a divine rescue. The name that's above every other name. Wherever you have been captured, wherever you have been trapped, wherever you have been tied down, wherever your glory is laboring that is making you to go in circles, it's making you to walk as if you are not walking. If your amen can go louder, 
open heaven will locate you this morning in the name of Jesus. Because when that happened, there will be a restoration of original glory. The cult that was tied down was meant to carry luggage, to carry load, but they chained it down. But when heaven opened, the cult did not carry ordinary luggage, it carried the king of glory. That's a restoration of original glory. When heaven opened, number six, there will be divine remembrance where the enemy thought they have kept you. God that knows the hidden secret will bring you out. That was the story of the, bo the, bo the bones in the valley that were very dry. Ezekiel 37. Nobody knew they were there. As a matter of fact, if God did not intervene, even the prophet did not believe something can happen. You remember the story? Remember Mephibosheth? In 2 Samuel chapter 9. Mephibosheth was in Lodiba. And it was like if he's going to die in Lodiba. But when heaven opens, favor comes. It opened heaven. And Mephibosheth was located in Lodiba. And he was restored to the original destiny. Somebody listen to me this morning. Your season of restoration is here. Say a bigger amen. Just make up your mind to cooperate with God. And you will see that there is really, really your season. When heaven opens, it shall be a new beginning. It shall be what? A new beginning. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Remember, you know the former things? I consider the things of old, I will do a new thing. The realm of open heaven, brethren, it calls for warfare. It calls for commitment. How is your commitment? It calls for dedication. It calls for uncompromising stand for God. The realm of open level, it calls for dogmatic and dogged obedience. The realm of open level, it calls for sacrificial mindset and sacrificial lifestyle. Amen. As I begin to wrap up, let me quickly give you the freedom nugget. What do I call it? Freedom nugget. Freedom nugget. If God is blessing you, shout hallelujah. Number one, you need to declare your total allegiance for the Lordship of Jesus. Acknowledging in words and in deeds. Don't play games with God. The Bible says God is a God of knowledge. By him, actions are weighed. You can't deceive God. You can deceive everybody. Deceive God. First Samuel 2, verse 3. Number 2. Look at Confession of sin with all consciousness. Don't justify yourself. Forgiveness is the foundation of every real move of God. First John 1, verse 9. Number three, not yet. Declare war against foundational battles or affliction by your personal sacrifices. Prepare to raise an altar for God after you have dis destroyed or Render powerless the altar that is speaking against you, that has held you captive. You need to raise a new positive altar that will speak louder and stronger. That was what Gideon did. Judges 6, 25 and 26. Judges 6, 25 and 26. The Lord instructed him to pull down the altars of Baal that have held them captive in their family. Raise another one. Some of you this morning raise an altar. Number four, declare for God in a dogged, committed, consistent, addicted service. Rugged, dogged, consistent, addicted service. Job 36, 11. 
They will be and serve him, shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. See, therefore, my brethren, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. My beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. Number five, pay attention to negative dreams and repeated oppression. Pay attention to negative dreams and repeated oppression and declare strategic war against them. Don't ignore or trivialize dreams. Dreams are window into the spiritual. A man had a dream that he saw himself in a, in a funeral gathering and they are singing funeral song. And he checked the pamphlet of the song. He saw his own picture. And he started shouting at that meeting. I'm not there though. I'm not there though. You people should stop singing. Nobody could hear him. When he woke up, he told the wife, they just pray casual prayers. They didn't know what to do. There are what to do when you dream that you saw yourself dead. dead. Uh, that is not the preaching for this morning. It was not long. The man, the man died shamefully. And the wife was saying, and we saw it in your dream. Every time a dream comes, it comes as a warning. It comes as instruction. It comes as revelation. You need to understand and pay attention to negative dreams. Are you with me? The Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Finally, this morning, be a rugged defender of God and his kingdom. Be a rugged defender of God and his kingdom. Exodus 32, verse 26. The Bible said, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Let it come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Every child of God should be a spiritual Levite. Are you with me? Summary, the brethren, it's your season of restoration. It's your season of freedom. It's your season of your dominion. It's your season of your new beginning. It's your choice. Are you blessed? Are you sure? Celebrate Jesus. God sent me to you this morning. But before I deliver the prophetic assignment to you, I want to give opportunity to one or two people that want to give their life to Jesus. Or rededicate their life. If you are here this morning, you want to give a life to Jesus, or you want to rededicate your life, anywhere you are, as all X is bowed, you lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. Lift up your right hand anywhere you are. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? God bless you, my sister. Let you go up very well. Mama, let the hand go up very well. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Ushers, please wash out for those hands for me. Watch out for them for me. I'm not calling you out. Thank you, Father. So if your hand is lifted, lift it up very well. Place the other one in your chest. Lift it up very well. And place the other one in your chest. Father, thank you. Nobody comes to you except to draw them. Father, save the souls genuinely. Forgive them their sins. Write their name in the book of life. Give them a new beginning. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say a bigger amen. Shall you all rise up, everybody? Let's shout one big hallelujah. Brother, before I leave this pulpit this morning, the assignment that God sent me is in two ways. Number one, God sent me to everyone that are having immigration issues. I discovered that it's, it's a major issue around here. I prayed for them yesterday. But I bet you are not here yesterday. You are here today. 
want you to come to the altar. Let me agree with you so that favor of God can speak for you. The rest of us, let's pray this prayer. The prayer, just simple prayer we want to pray is, Lord, let the heaven open for me. I will no longer operate under closed heaven. Let me enjoy open heaven henceforth. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. If you are part of those that I need to pray for, come quickly. Don't waste my time. I have other things to do. Father, let my heaven open. Lord, open my heaven in the name of Jesus. Let me no longer operate under closed heaven in the name of Jesus. No more closed heaven in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say forth or two hands. I pray for you the favor of God that go beyond system. Favor that bypass protocol. Favor that bypass rules and regulation. We speak for you in the name of Jesus. By this meeting, you will enjoy a turnaround. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. It's, it's done. God gave instruction, if I remember very well, yesterday. The instruction was God wanted to sow a prophetic seed of divine settlement. Am I, those of you are here, is that what I said? Divine settlement. Many times I said things I don't even remember what I said again. And the seed must have four inside. I think I remember that. God bless you. You can go back. The second thing I want to. The second thing God. This one involves everybody at the same time, not many, many everybody. Are you with me? Lord said I should bring people in this assembly to a covenant of a greater glory. What did I say? Covenant of a greater glory. What does it mean? It means that no better yesterday. It means a new beginning. It means you are, you are about to cross a boundary. It means you are about to set a new record. It means you are about to begin to enjoy immunity against sickness and affliction. It means God is about to bring you into a stressless fulfillment. It means God is about to begin something remarkable in your life. And above all, it means God is about to give you a glorious tomorrow. Glorious tomorrow is when a man is alive to see his children's children. Glorious tomorrow is when a man is alive to enjoy the fruit of his labor. Glorious tomorrow is when at old age you are still strong not in sickness. Glorious tomorrow is when in your lifetime, your adult children are raising families. That's a glorious tomorrow. So, when we talk about covenant for a greater glory, it means that the glory you see now will be a child's play to what God is about to do. And you don't enter into a covenant without a sacrifice. That's where the fight always comes in the church. The Bible says, gather my saints together those that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. So, God asked me to bring you into that covenant of a greater glory this morning by sacrifice. And I'm going to make it easy for everybody in three categories. Number one category is those that will be raising an altar of sacrifice with a thousand and above. Second category is those that will be doing 500 to 900. And the third category is those that will be doing from 400 to 100. And it, it, it's not about the money. It's about the fulfillment that God wants to give you after this encounter. So number, whatever the category you find yourself so that we don't know who is who. You are the one that knows what is sacrifice to you. No matter who you are, walk upon to this altar and be, be talking to God the kind of greater glory you wanted. Walk to the altar. Just walk to the altar. Climb, climb the altar. Walk to the altar. And be talking about, be talking to God about the greater glory. Is it fulfillment? Is it um, better days? Is it glorious tomorrow? I, 
as you are standing on the altar, make up your mind what exactly is going to be your own sacrifice for this encounter. Because God is about to do something new. It's a covenant for a glorious tomorrow. Glorious tomorrow means you don't want to die like your father. Greater glory means where your father stopped, you will not stop. Greater glory means if your father did not build a house, you will build estates. Greater glory means what your parents suffer, you will not suffer it. There is a level better than the level where you are. That's exactly what we are talking about. I'm about to close the curtain. If you are coming, come very quickly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Lord is waiting for like three persons here. You are struggling within yourself. The Lord said, you know that you need to... You see, altar is a place of destiny remolding. It's a place of freedom. It's a place of open heaven. The symbolism of altar is that on the altar of God, destiny are rearranged. Those that are standing on the altar, don't say, I'm going to do what they say, I don't want to come out. You have to stand on this altar for this destiny refurbishing that God is doing this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody see joining us? If you are joining us, join us quickly, please. Summarize your expectation very quickly. Summarize it. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Face me, everybody. And step for your hands to me. I stand as God's representative this morning in agreement with all our fathers in the Lord in the house, I bring you into a covenant of a greater glory. In the name of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This altar will defend you. This sacrifice will speak for you. It will silence whatever is speaking against you. In the name of Jesus, the voice of this sacrifice will swallow the voice of whatever affliction in your life in the name of Jesus you will not spend your days in sickness you will not spend your days in captivity your better days are here your tomorrow shall be glorious in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in Jesus name say I receive it congratulations we will not write anybody's name down we believe they are children of God you want to do your own do it immediately you have less than 24 hours to do these things. God bless you. Let's clap for Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I ask us to bring an anchor sheaf. Shall we just rise up and lift up the anchor sheaf? Lift up the anchor sheaf. Even if it's the one in your pocket, let the media display where we are going to redeem the covenant seed immediately. Display it immediately. Thank you, Father. Lift up the handkerchief. Those that didn't have, please give to them. Please, help, somebody help me, help, someone should help me give uh, Pastor Robinson and Mommy handkerchief, please. Uh, please, everybody should have one. The Bible says apron and handkerchief were taken from Paul, and it was working special miracles. Thank you, Father. This um, prophetic encounter is going to be very, very simple. The way God wants us to do it now. Are you with me? I'm going to engage my daddies in the house if they will not mind. That the Olufemi will speak so that's anchor chief. After he speak, Daddy Robinson will speak to that anchor chief too. After that, Daddy Oyedina will speak to that anchor chief. I will summarize it as the oracle for now. And the anchor chief will cease to be ordinary. Is that okay by us? Can I have a Daddy Olufemi, please? Can I have one, please? Can I have one? Please. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Raymond Sikin. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in our midst. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. By the reason of the anointing upon our lives, we decree and we declare that these anchors, anchors shall raise the dead, shall heal the sick, shall be a turnaround for as many as touch these handkerchiefs in the name of Jesus. The impossible will become possible. Oh, those that have been buried in prison, prison doors shall be open. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever this handkerchief is raised, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we are prophesying. Amen. Can I have Daddy Robinson, please? God, we thank you right now. We love you right now, oh God. God, we pray right now, oh God, by faith, God. You said in your word that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, God. We thank you right now for open heavens right now. We thank you right now, oh God, for foundational captivities, oh God. Being dismissed right now, oh God. Take it away right now, oh God. We know you're able right now. Our power's in your hand. Deliverance is in your hand, oh God. By faith, we raise our handkerchiefs, God. Asking you to honor, oh God, our faith right now. Step in right now. Remove right now. We come against the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now. We praise you right now. In Jesus' name, thank you. And amen. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the God of Daddy Adeboe. We are using all these names to pray over these handkerchiefs that the anointing of God that works for our dad in the Lord that they are devoy rest mightily upon these handkerchiefs in Jesus wherever these handkerchiefs get so let there be miracles when this handkerchief touch the sick the sick shall be healed when this handkerchief touch the dead the dead shall be raised when this handkerchief was laid over any immigration papers, there will be said divine settlement. Lord, fulfill all the aspirations of our lives according to your will in Jesus. Let there be pleasant surprises through this handkerchief. And let your name be glorified. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name. In agreement with all our fathers, encounter with this anchorship will produce the change that your life has been waiting for. Encounter with this anchorship will produce your freedom. Total freedom. Encounter with this anchorship will make you totally free from oppression. This anchorship will heal that cancer. To heal that sickness. This anchor shift is declared the mantle of favor, mantle of freedom, mantle of deliverance, mantle of dominion. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Do you believe it? Uh, use, use it, test it, lift on your head and prophesy. Thank you very much for watching that very wonderful video. I hope and I know that your life has been transformed by the sermon or the ministration you just watched right now. I want you to do one thing for me if you've not done it already. I want you to subscribe to this YouTube platform. I want you to click on, click on notification bell so that you can get updates on when we post um, our videos. I want you to also share this video with your friends and family if you feel that someone needs it. I want you to share it to them so that you can also inspire them. I want you to also give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down in the comment section. If you've done all these things, thank you very much for doing them. And if you've not done them, please do it right now. 
Copless U.